The CNO Canal Trust was established in 2007. My name is Robert Mertz. I'm a board member of the trust. And uh, we basically are working with the park in order to promote its interests, to help uh, with interpretive educational programs, preservation of the canal uh, as, a, as a canal, also preservation of the towpath. Uh, the Sino Canal was started actually on July 4th, 1828. It was finished construction in 1850. It goes 184 and a half miles from uh, Georgetown in Washington to Cumberland, Maryland. The reason for building the canal was that there's a change of 605 feet in elevation between Washington and Cumberland. And there are Great Falls being the largest fall, but there are a lot of obstacles. It was the second major canal built in this country after the Erie Canal. And the, they have a lot of structures in this park. Some of those structures were lock houses. These houses were for the lock keepers who collected tolls and kept records of commerce on the canal. And the, the fear was that these would just collapse if there wasn't something done to protect them. What could you do to protect them that wasn't just putting in maintenance dollars, but could you use them both to preserve them and to give people a chance to understand the history of the park? So the Canal Trust decided to allow people to stay overnight in a lock house. The funds raised would help preserve these historic buildings and it would give the public a glimpse of what it was like to live there years ago. Basically, you're trying to explain to the community uh, and bring them into the park to enjoy it, uh, to help uh, as volunteers to protect it, to maintain it. I'm Becky Curtis. I'm the Director of Programs and Partnerships for the CNO Canal Trust, and today we're at Lockhouse 25. So Canal Quarters uh, is an interpretive, uh, immersive experience within the park where you can uh, register for an overnight stay. Each lock house is re restored, uh, furnished, and interprets a different time period and story in the canal's history. Um, you can reserve for one to three nights, and to do so you'd go on uh, canalquarters.org. From there, you can choose which lock house would appeal to you most, which story, where on the canal you want to stay, and look at a calendar of dates. Each one has been, um, has had a theme, an interpretive and educational theme associated with it. We have four in Montgomery County. Uh, we have Lock House 6 in Brookmont, which is uh, just a few miles out of the District of Columbia. We have Lock House 10 in Cabin John, Lock House 22 at Pennyfield Lock, which is uh, just outside Potomac. My name is Charlie Butler and I'm with Montgomery County Recreation Therapeutic Recreation and I am in charge of the camp you see behind us, Camp Big Pines. A lot of the kids that we have in therapeutic recreation programs need smaller groups, um, a little more staff to help them get through a lot of the activities. Um, I have been doing therapeutic recreation programming for about 30 years, um, so I've done kids with emotional um, issues, the autism spectrum, ADHD, learning disabilities, so for me it's um, something where I feel like I can offer them some fun. We have aquatic classes, um, classes with um, um, doing things in arts and crafts, we do uh, aerobics, um, we do camps, we do um, special events, dances. Very nice. <laughs> My name is Jackie Sweeney. I'm the director of Camp Big Pines. Wow, you are a resident superhero expert. This camp is a great place where they can work on their social skills and have staff who really understand their needs and their strengths. And they're able to work on their goals that they would have at school here at camp. So it's kind of a continuous effort. And so I think it's great that Montgomery County has these camps so that it's seamless for these kids. So they're working on all these things all year long. They just need someone to understand, you know, their strengths and their needs and to work with them for them to be successful. You have other kids at camp who are similar to you. How does that make you feel? Good. Makes you feel good? Because most kids aren't like me. Okay. So here at camp, everybody is accepted for who they are. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're getting ready to go board our pontoon boat, the Kingfisher, at Little Seneca Lake. This is 
Tina Stratura. She is our naturalist. Tina does our boat tours. She does all different kinds of nature programs, runs our summer camps. When they originally formed uh, the town of Boyd's, uh, it was made for the railroad, and the gentleman that formed the town, Colonel Boyd, um, had his farm here. And here's the old road right here for Black Hill Road. This is where you used to be able to drive through the valley, and that's the remnant of the road. Um, there were many, many farms in this area. Now they're mostly under the lake, and so we see some of these trees here. It's actually part of the original forest and farmland that was here. This is actually considered a trophy bass fishing area. It's uh, one of the best kept secrets for largemouth bass fishing in the state of Maryland. The trees, uh, we call them snags, they're dead, but they still provide great, great habitat for birds and turtles and things. We have lots of turtles here. We have red bellies, um, snapping turtles, painted turtles, um, but you'll sometimes see a whole family group on there. They all kind of congregate together because safety in numbers. Uh, Maryland has no natural lakes. Um, this lake was filled in 1986, 505 acres, um, 5 billion gallons of water. Uh, the purpose of the lake is actually as a drinking water reservoir for the D.C. metro area. Um, so what they would do would be able to open up the dam and release this water into the Potomac River down to drinking spots further down. Um, it also helps feed a trout stream four miles um, uh, down Little Seneca Creek. The lake is fed by three creeks, so the lake kind of looks like a big W. It's a great resource for all kinds of wildlife. Oh, there's a buck, oh my goodness. Oh my God. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Sharp chin hawk right there. There's the kingfisher too, flying right up there. A really, really neat little bird. It's a killdeer. Yep, two killdeers. Yep, they're a shorebird typically. There's some Canada geese up here, and this is a family. The smaller ones are this year's young. We see so many incredible birds here because of the resource of the water um, as they're traveling. Um, they oftentimes take a stop here or they'll spend the whole winter, which is really neat.